So I feel like when I do videos like these, I'm supposed to do like a B-roll sequence of me making coffee and getting ready for the day, but I don't think you guys really care about that and neither do I. So we're just gonna jump right to the point right away. What's up guys, Tristan here and I am back with another video. And today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to optimize your workflow using Adobe Premiere Pro this year in 2021. Um, I've been using this process for a little over a year and a half now, and it's just made my editing experience so much faster and so much easier and organized. And I wish I would have figured this out a lot sooner, but it's never too late, right? So before what I used to do when I was done filming a video or whatever, I would take those clips directly from the memory card and drop it directly into Adobe Premiere Pro with zero organization wild right but now i got it down to the streamline process that i use over and over again and again it just makes it so much easier and organized when it comes to editing my video so with all that said i'm going to show you guys my streamline process so let's go ahead and jump to my computer now the first thing i want to do is create folders for every single piece of content that i'm going to be using in this project so i'm going to open up my hard drive it is a fresh hard drive you can see it says youtube 2021 in this folder so i'm going to double click that and there are two folders there there is a template folder which is basically my folder template we'll get into that here in a second and i have my archive folder so when i'm completely done with a project i just drop it into the archive folder there's some projects that i've done this year already so i'm going to back out and i'm going to create a folder right now and title it what the video is going to be about so uh this video i'm going to be using footage from my last super 73 video that i uploaded two days ago um, and then I'm going to go into the template folder. I'm going to click that. So there are five folders here. There is a raw fo folder for all the footage that I shot. There is an Adobe folder where I house the Adobe project file. There are assets. Um, this is where my IG outro and my like and subscribe CTAs are that goes into my videos. There is the exports folder. Obviously, once you're done with your project, you export them here and the photos folder. So sometimes when I'm out, um, shooting a video I take photos I just drop them in there so what I want to do I want to select all of these and I'm going to copy them with command C I'm gonna go back out open up my new project uh, folder the super 73 one and I'm gonna post pay I'm sorry I'm gonna paste the folders into here now I have my template into my actual project folder that I'll be working from and the first thing I want to do is drag and drop all the footage into my raw folder. So in here I'm going to create four different folders because I use four different cameras. So the first folder I'm going to create and to create a new folder I'm just hitting shift command N is the folder for the Canon EOS R6 that I used. I'm going to create a folder for the Hero 9, the GoPro Hero 9 a folder for the GoPro Hero 7, and one last folder for the Mavic Air 2. So now that these uh, folders are created, I'm just gonna drag and drop the footage from each camera to its respective folder. For example, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the EOS R6 footage in there. My memory card is right here. Double click that, Command A to select all, and I'm just gonna drag and drop all this footage into that folder. Now I have all my footage from the R6 in the R6 folder, and I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of the footage and these folders. Um, I already have the Hero 9 footage in the Hero 9 folder, Hero 7 footage in the Hero 7 folder, and so on and so forth. One thing you might want to do before importing your clips into Premiere is convert them to Apple ProRes 422HQ. Um, these files are a lot bigger, yes, but they do maintain more information. That way it makes color correcting and color grading that much easier. For the purposes of this video, I won't do that, but I will leave detailed instructions in the description below. Now we can finally open up Adobe Premiere Pro. So what we're going to do is open up that Super 73 folder, go to the Adobe folder and it says new project. I'm just going to change it to the name of our current project that we're working on. So again, Super 73. I'm going to double click that and it's going to open up Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, we're in Premiere and as you can see, I already have two bins set up in the projects folder. I have a sequence bin and I have a nest bin. Um, I have a sequence bin because depending on the video, I may want to edit it in different parts. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to do it in a separate sequence so I don't confuse myself by editing on the main timeline. And I also have a nest bin just in case if I create any nest in the video, I can just drop those in there. So now I'm going to go back into my project folder and I want to select my raw folder by hitting command 
and clicking in the assets folder and I'm going to drag and drop both folders into the project bin. Now that we have both folders in the project, I'm going to click the assets folder first and I'm going to create an adjustment layer by clicking new item down here, click adjustment layer, hit OK and boom, the adjustment layer shows up right there. Um, I use the adjustment layer to color correct and color grade. So once I drop a clip onto the timeline, I'll drop the adjustment layer on top of that and I'll color correct and color grade that adjustment layer. The reason I do this is because just in case I get way too far into color correcting or I get myself into a rut, I can just make adjustments on that layer and not the clip itself. And if worse comes to worse, I can just delete that adjustment layer. Now I'm going to go back into the project folder. I'm going to double click on raw. And as you can see, there are all four folders that I created from the raw folder in the template. Um, and what I want to do, I want to click into each one and I want to label them different colors. And I'll tell you why here in a second. So I'm going to hit command a for select all I'm going to right click and go to label. I'm going to make the hero nine purple. Where's purple? There we go. Go back to the raw folder and I'm going to go to the hero seven, make these yellow. So label yellow. Where is it right there? Then we're going to go to the EOS R6. I always make my R6 color blue. And last but not least is the air two. I'm going to make this one clip. Oh, hold on there. I'm going to make this one clip. Uh, let's go with mango. So the reason I label all my clips from each camera different colors is because I don't want to be confused as to which clip I'm editing. If they were all the same color, it'd be a nightmare. It'd be a huge puzzle that I'm not willing to solve. So again, uh, making these different colors helps me separate one clip from the other in terms of which camera I use for that particular clip. All right, so we're almost there. We're almost about to start editing the video, but there's one last thing that I do before I start editing and that's getting music for the video because music is probably the most important part of this process because if you have some footage, for example, if I'm riding my bike and I have some dinky song behind it, it's not gonna look right. Weird, right? However, if I pick some music that makes me feel like I'm cruising on my bike and going on an adventure, it'll look and sound that much better. Huge difference, right? So I already downloaded the music for this video that I'm going to use and I put it in my assets folder that's in my hard drive. So I'm just going to drag and drop it into the assets folder in the project file in Adobe Premiere Pro and it's there, simple as that. All right, finally, I have all my music and I have all the clips, so now I wanna create a sequence in the sequences folder, so I'm gonna double click this folder and I'm gonna hit Command N for new sequence and I'm just gonna title this Super 73 and I'm gonna go into settings because I shot 4K, I'm gonna change the frame size to 3840 by 2160 and I'm going to hit OK. Now from there, I'm gonna go into the EOS R6 folder and select my first clip and I'm gonna put it right there. And I'm gonna go into the assets folder, get that adjustment layer, and I'm gonna color correct this first clip to where I see fit. I like to like get a solid shot so it's not like blurry or anything. So I think this works right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do, gonna go into the basic correction and bring down the shadows just a little bit. I'm gonna go into the curves and I'm just gonna make a slight S curve, bring that one down and then bring that one up like this. I do wanna make the scene a little bit warmer so I'm gonna go back into basic correction and put the temperature up just a little bit, maybe around 8.8, I think that looks good. And I also wanna add a tiny vignette. I like doing tiny vignettes on the talking portions of my video. So I'm, I always go with point three, negative point three to add that slight vignette. Um, as far as sharpening goes, I'm gonna to go to the creating creative tab and I'm gonna sharpen it. I always go up to like 18 and I'm gonna up the saturation just a little bit to like one, 105 has always been safe for me. So that's how I color correct my clips. Again, I have the adjustment layer so I can also see what it looks like without the color correction. If I hit this eyeball, that's before, that's after just some basic color correction. 
and then from there you just cut up the video and edit now if you're watching this video i can almost assume that you know how to cut video and add basic transitions and that's really all i use when i edit my video so i'm not going to go get into that um i also use um some quick keys not a lot so if there's quick keys that you like to use please drop them down in the description below because more the more quick keys the more easier and faster this process gets now for me i always like to put the finishing touch on my video and again that's the cta assets that i have in the assets folder so i'm going to put the like and subscribe towards the end because that's where i always say hey make sure you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already blah 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 and i'm going to shrink it down a little bit and i'm going to move it over to the side that's where i usually always have it and then i like to fade the video to black so i'm going to go to effects video transitions dissolve dip to black and then this is where i put my instagram outro right over here and as you can see uh let me move it just a little bit over there there we go this is my instagram outro Oh, it's not in 4K, so I got to make it bigger. This is in 1080p, so I'm going to go to effects controls and I'm just going to double the size to 200. And then let's see how this transitions out. So I'm going to go back here, hit the space bar for play. And then boom, that is my Instagram CTA. All right, so you finished editing your video, you're 100% done, and now you're ready to export it. So let's go ahead and export this video. So make sure you're in the timeline right here. You're gonna hit Command M. So the first thing I wanna do is change the format to H.264 for YouTube purposes, and I'm gonna go down all the way to YouTube 2601 4K Ultra HD. That's how I always export my videos. 4k on um, the output name that's the title of the video right here but i want to make sure i'm exporting it to the exports folder so i'm going to double click on that i'm going to go to youtube 2021 super 73 exports save easy as that i'm going to hit match source that's easy we're going to go down render at maximum depth you click use maximum render quality and then i want to change the bitrate setting so i'm going to go to vbr to pass i'm going to make the target bitrate 55 for the best quality on youtube and the maximum bitrate 75 and then once that's all set you're ready to export you just hit export or you can queue it for the adobe media converter i think that's what it's called and no adobe media encoder there we go and you can export it there so that's basically it you're done you can upload your video now and share it with the world so everyone can see isn't that exciting so that does it for this video guys i hope it helps if you're just getting into video and you want a better way to organize your clips and streamline your editing process um, if you're a veteran like me and your process is different i would love to know what your process is so drop that in the comments below i would love to see how you guys edit your videos too thank you guys for watching if you like this video please 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 hit that like button this is when the graphic comes up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already my name is tristan irvin and i make videos weekly hit that bell notification so every time i do upload a video you get notified right away and you can be the first one to comment that does it for me guys again thanks for watching follow me on social media and i'll see you in the next video peace My, my lights died. Awesome. You know, I try to maintain continuity in my videos and I thought I charged my lights to last throughout this whole process, but they're dead. It did take me over an hour to shoot this video. So I don't know. What can you do?